Hey guys, happy Friday. It's time for a new Facebook Friday. Yay, I took last week off because I was so swamped. I had four events within one week and I just, whew, I couldn't get it all done. So I took last week off, but I'm back today. Hi, Julie. Um, and I've got all new stuff, yay. Yay for the new stuff. Um, so as we wait for people to join, I'm going to remind you that over on my blog right now, hopefully it went up. Hi, Gina. Um, hopefully it went up at the same time I went live. Um, my product sheet, project sheet, I always call it product sheet, but it's project sheet because each of the three projects we're going to make today is listed on a PDF over there on my blog, and it has all the products listed as well as the measurements that you're going to need. There's also three new things that I am offering. Um, paper shares. Hi, Corey. It's good to see you. Um, paper shares are... Um, I hope that doesn't mean I'm I'm on my business page and not my personal page. Um, product shares, you guys. Um, if you want paper and uh, ribbon and all the new pa all the new paper and ribbon from the catalog, I offer a product share that. Um, sorry, I'm so distracted by this computer. I offer a product share where you get a little bit of everything. You get a half sheet of all the new designer series paper and you get a yard of all the new ribbon. It's a great way to get everything that you want immediately. You know, I don't think there's very many of us who can buy all the um, brand new packs of paper right away. I know we have to we have to spread it out, right, over time. But if you buy a into a product share, then you get a little bit of everything right at the beginning. And it um, kind of gives you an idea of what you want to invest in, which packs and bolts of ribbon you want to invest in. Um, so I do my papers 6x12 because I know I have a lot of scrapbooking customers. So 6x12, um, the sheets will all be 6x12 unless it's a 6x6 stack. And then, of course, it'll be a 6x6 piece. Um, those close next Friday. So um, as that'll be the first order I put in when that catalog goes live at two o'clock central. So make sure if you want those, type that in right there and that'll take you over to the information. The other thing that is closing on Thursday are signups for my In Color Club. This is a great way to get those five new In Colors um, all at the beginning of the catalog. You will get each month a different color. You'll get a pack of cardstock. You'll get the bowl of ribbon and the ink pad, the marker, the reinker, the clips, the embossing powder, a handmade card from me, and a surprise full full embellishment each month. So that um, that link is right there. I've had quite a big response, my biggest response ever. So thank you for everybody who signed up. I know you're excited about those new colors. And you guys, I've get, I, you're asking about the Blends Club. I'm getting a lot of questions if I'm going to do the Blends Club again. And yes, I am. But I'm going to do the In Color Club first. So after the first five months, I'll start the Blends Club for all the new blend markers. Okay, so I know you guys are wondering about that. Now, the thing that I'm really excited about, let me show you my class to go for June. And I haven't posted it really anywhere yet. I'm going to show you guys first. Um, as you may know, Stampin' Up! Demonstrators got to order early from the catalog, um, but not everything. We could only order a selection of things. So the thing that I loved the very most on our pre-order was this bundle. It's called Sea of Texture. This is the stamp set. And then the framelits is what I really, really love. Of course, the cute little octopus. Um, this is really cool. It cuts out a net. Um, and I actually used that on my message in a bottle class this month. So if you order that for me, you're going to get one of those in your kit. Um, so then the little fish and the coral and the sea grasses and the sand dollars that are so cute. So of course I had to design a class and I kind of went crazy. You guys, I have eight projects here. Usually I do five, but I have eight. So the class is only going to include six of those. And then two are going to be the bonus. One of the bonuses obviously is one that I can't ship. And it's this little, little cute um, memory in a jar. So the, that'll be in the PDF. And then, 
What else? Let's see. Where do I start? This one is a um, little suntan lotion holder. I thought that would be a cute little party favor if you had like a pool party or a summer party. Um, isn't he so cute? I just really love that, that um, octopus. And then this one holds. Look how perfect this is from Bath and Body Works. I saw it and I said, oh my gosh, that's perfect. So this is another one included in your class. And then there's five cards. One is a shaker card that features the little um, tranquil texture sprinkles, which you'll get a whole pack of those in your kit. And then we've got several other cards here. I just love stacking all these cute little or, um, die cuts. They're so beautiful and some of the paper too. So that's the only class to go I'm gonna do in June. June is super busy as my kids are home um, and the new catalog and I'm doing some uh, demonstrator training uh, with my friend Rhonda. So I, I can only do one class this month, but I made it a really good one. So the price of the whole class, including the bundle, is $65. When you get that, option one, you're getting these for free. You're also getting a bolt of twine, Knight of Navy. Now, if you already have this, maybe you're a demonstrator and you already have this, you can order it without, and it's $35. And then, of course, there's the PDF option. If you just want the PDF for all eight projects, that is $15. And the kit, just the make and takes for my team, is $14. So, if you're interested in this, make sure you go over to my blog. I haven't really listed it anywhere. It's on the calendar page. If you click on the calendar tab up at the top, you'll find it. But right here, if you type this in, that'll take you directly to the details for that. Um, I'm excited about it. I hope you guys like it too. It's very summery and um, I think it's perfect for summer. Okay, so those are the three things I was going to tell you today. Um, let's see what I want to show you. Now, um, if you guys don't have a catalog, please message me. Um, don't comment here. Send me an email or a message and I will send you a catalog in the mail. Now, I'm, I only send spiral bound catalogs to um, my club members, but I'll send you a regular catalog in the mail for free. If you don't have a demonstrator, I'd be happy to send that to you. So everything today we're doing is out of here. Oh, let me show you a couple of cards that I got since the last time we spoke. This card features new things from the catalog, all new, and it was made by my friend Cindy Schuster. She was an artisan um, when I was an artisan, and now she actually works at Stamping Up. And she helped organize the Stamparatus blog hop, hop. So she sent everybody a card, isn't that beautiful? I just love it. So, what a treasure. So thank you, Cindy. And then I got a few other cards in the mail. This was cute with the, the seeds. This is um, similar to the one that I had in my, um, um, in the all-star tutorial bundle maybe last month and this is from Diane so Diane thank you very much that's very sweet I don't know why my the seeds are sticking I think I, I think that's my fault but anyway they slide in and out all right and then this super cute card from Jennifer she's in my in my downline isn't that cute the little fish jumping out so cute she did something similar for her swap and um, she um, I, I wasn't in her group, so she had sent me one, and I was very happy, so thank you. And then this one is also from um, my downline. Isn't it beautiful? She made it for the swap, and I wasn't in the group. I think I might have shown you guys this card, or maybe I talked about it, and I didn't have my own, so she sent me my own. Isn't it beautiful? I'm very excited. This is one I will have definitely have to put on display because it is a ton of work So beautiful. Thanks, guys, for the cards. It's so kind of you when I see something in my mailbox that's not just junk mail it's so nice okay so I think we're ready to stamp oh no prizes 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 last so last week we didn't have Facebook Friday um, the week before I um, did a giveaway for the home life welcome home framelits and the stamp set and I drew that winner today and it's Belinda my friend here locally and I've actually already talked to her and she's coming over to pick it up in a little while so congratulations Belinda I'm very excited for you um, I know you'll enjoy that um, this week I am giving away one of this month's paper pumpkin do you guys get paper pumpkin 
It, um, I get several of them um, because I, I like to have a few on hand and I like to give some as gifts too. And this is um, a masculine paper pumpkin this month. Let me open it up for you guys so you can see it. And it's these masculine cards, really good, because I really struggle with masculine cards. And so when I see a paper pumpkin that has them, I, I'm happy because it means that I will have some masculine cards on hand. But anyway, it includes the kit, and it includes the stamp. That's a lot of stamps. And it includes a little ink spot in Mossy Meadow, which is one of our new colors coming back. The dogs are coming down to say hello to you guys. I'm not sure what spurred their hello, but they're coming. Hopefully they'll take their, their hellos outside in the backyard. <laughs> okay, so enter this on my um, blog. You can go over to my blog and there's a widget at the bottom of the post. Just enter your email address and it randomly draws a winner for me every week, which makes it easy. And then if you share this week, I will be sending um, several people some of these glimmer glitter enamel dots. I have a nice little stash of these and I'd like to give them away. So share the video on Facebook and I will draw several winners next week for this. Okay, I think we're ready to stamp again. Everything that I'm doing this week is from the new catalog. Um, we have new colors, which I think I'm the most excited about. It kind of refreshes everything that we have um, when you do, when you stamp with new colors. It just makes it, that stamp set maybe you've used for years, it makes it look totally different. So that's what I kind of focused on this week, um, show, showing you a few of my favorite new colors. Um, and the stamp sets, of course, will not be available until June 1st. However, if you need to put in an order before the old catalog retires, this one right here, let me get it, the Occasions catalog and, oh, my worn out copy, this one from this past year, this goes away on Thursday, gone, totally gone. So if there's something in here that you want, um, now not everything is retiring, but a lot of it is. Um, so those retiring things, and you can see it on the website, if you want them, you have got to get your order in by Thursday. Um, same, with, same with the Occasions catalog. Some of it's carrying over, but a lot of it's retiring like this. So make sure that you hop over. If you put that order in, by Monday night and you use the host code here, I'm gonna have it here, hopefully you guys can see it. Um, I will send you all three of these make and takes for free. Um, it'll be make and take kits so that when you do get to order on June 1st, you can order the, the things that you need and you'll be able to make them at home. All right, I think that's it. I think we are ready. Let's see, where are we gonna start today? All right, so hello, hello, hello. I have been ignoring you guys because I can't complete a thought when I start reading. <laughs> I can't complete a complete sentence when I start reading your comments. So hello, I'm sorry to ignore you. Thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate it. All right, our first card features Granny Apple Green. And this green, I don't know, I just love it. It's bright. It's like Lemon Lime Twist, but greener. And it's bright and it's beautiful and I absolutely love it. So I've paired it with Lemon Lime Twist and I've also paired it with two other of our new colors. Petal Pink is a new subtle and Flirty Flamingo, no, it's not new because it was an in color, but it was supposed to go away this month, but they're keeping it. So now it's a core color. So I'm calling it a new color. And these are all in our new ink pads um, or ink cases. If you haven't seen them yet, they open differently. You, you know, our, our old ink cases open like this. You had to push that like that and then turn and then push. It was kind of complicated um, for people when they first began stamping. But these open just like your makeup. Just open up like that and then it'll slide in like that. They are tight and they're tight by design. Um, they will loosen up the more that you use them. But because it's tight, that kind of keeps the air out and um, you know protects your ink a little bit better. The, the pad itself is the same pad in our current cases. So nothing's new there. Um, are the reinkers you can use. So if you have old reinkers but a new pad, you can use the old reinker in the new pad. The new reinkers can be used on the old pad as well. There's just a small difference in the new reinkers. They have something called a defoamer 
in it and it keeps um, the ink from kind of bubbling up. So it's just a little bit, bit of improvement. I have no idea what is all over my hands. I'm just seeing that. I've been stamping today. Can you tell? So anyways, when you order these new colors, they will be in the new cases. All right, so the stamp set I'm using is called, and I, you know what, I keep calling it the wrong thing, and I even noticed on the PDF that I typed in artistic expressions. No, it's abstract impressions. So the title is totally wrong on the PDF, but that's what it is, abstract impressions. Um, and it's <laughs> this stamp set is designed to look kind of um, like the abstract paintings, you know, um, kind of not very detailed, but like water, you know, when a watercolor artist paints, everything is kind of um, washed together and it's not very um, specific and detailed. So that's kind of what these stamps are designed to do. Okay, let's make our card base first. Um, I decided to do a background just using the word thank you. Let's see, where's my grid paper? Um, and then I'm gonna use another sentiment as really the focal Point, the focal sentiment. All right, so I'm just gonna start kind of off-centered, and I'm just gonna go across about two-thirds of the way down. And I don't want them lined up. I want them just in different, you know, different positions. And you don't need to worry too much about this being exactly straight. It's just kind of a a subtle message in the background of your card. And I ha am having a really hard time seeing it because the glare from my lights. But hopefully when you do yours, you'll be able to get right on top of it and look. All right, so about that, that way, a little bit more than half. Now I'm gonna take these two grass pieces, these grass stamps. One of them is a little fatter than the other, and this one's a little skinny. So with the fat one, I'm gonna get the lemon lime twisting, and this is going to create a lighter shade, a lighter grass in the background. So you can kind of see how that's lighter. Then with the fatter grass, I'm gonna go back to the granny apple green and just stamp those kind of off. They don't match up, they're not supposed to, they just kind of live together harmoniously <laughs> they, they are, are not you know perfectly on top of each other but that's okay that's the way it's supposed to be now I'm gonna get the sentiment this is the sentiment I really want the, my recipient to read and it says if flowers were hugs I'd send you a thousand Isn't that sweet and then the thank you thank you thank you thank you is kind of subtle in the background all right so I went back to the granny apple right there Okay, so we have the background. Now let's do the flowers. And the measurements for these pieces, again, will be over on my PDF. So make sure you go over to my blog and get that PDF. So let's again do the fat grass, the wide grass. I guess wide would be a nicer way to say it. I'm gonna do lemon lime twist. And then the skinny or the narrow grass. And I'm gonna just do them overlapping to create dimension. Here we go. Now, you guys, I have already filmed two, all of these videos as standalone videos so that if you wanna come back and watch it, you don't have to watch through the whole Facebook Live. They'll be over on my YouTube channel. So if you just wanna to refer to one specific video, you can find it there and not have to, you know, like fast forward, rewind, and find whatever it is that you were looking for. Okay, so now the flowers. There's two different flower images. This one's more solid, and then these look like just little beans or something. And I'm gonna do the more solid ones in petal pink. And it is going off the paper a little bit, that's okay. Like that, whoops. And then Flirty Flamingo, the little beans, as I'm calling them, are just kind of the accents. Oh, the glare is so bad. I cannot see where I'm stamping. Mm, could be better, but that's okay. There we go. It's abstract, right? It doesn't matter. It's abstract. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so there's your stamping. A lot of big wow with just stamps. 
I'm not using a whole lot of embellishments today. Uh-oh, my fast fees, where is it? I'm not using a whole lot of, of embellishments today because we don't have them yet. Um, the catalog goes live for all of us on Friday and uh, even demonstrators. All right, so there's that. That was a flirty flamingo piece and then petal pink. And I created the frame so that the flirty flamingo piece was narrow and the petal pink piece was a little wider. And again, those measurements are over on that PDF. I just really love the way that these pop together, the pinks and the greens, I think they're perfect. Uh-oh, the link doesn't work, Janet. All right, I'll fix it. Go to pinkbuckaroo.com and it should be up, hopefully. Hopefully it went live. It may be because it hasn't gone live yet. So try that and let me know. Go to pinkbuckaroo.com. All right, this is um, new um, thread. What am I trying to say? Twine, nature's twine. And it comes in four colors. The pack comes, let me show you the four colors. Um, you can tell which one I've used more than the others, but it comes in a pack like this. So crumb cake, um, I think that's Rich Razzleberry, this is Mint Macaron, and I believe that this is either Calypso Coral or Grapefruit Grove, I can't remember, but doesn't it go nicely with flir Flirty Flamingo? I think it goes perfectly. All right, so that's it. So I'm reading your sense of your comments. Yeah, the stamp set is full of possibilities. I have used this just a few times. We've seen some amazing things online. Um, and the framelits that coordinate are out of this world. They're amazing. All right, so there you go. Project number one. I hope you guys like it. And um, make sure that you add Granny Apple Green to your list because it's a great one. Okay, so let me close up my inks and get the next project. Um, I do want to show you guys my chamois. We have a new chamois in the catalog, and I I might venture to say it's my favorite thing in the catalog. Um, it's just a stamp cleaner, and doesn't it look disgusting? But that means I've been stamping a lot. So you just take your stamps and you just wipe them. It's wet, and I've got it in a clear stamp case, and it keeps it moist. And... Um, I have been doing some research and I read someone said that she even threw hers in the washing machine. So I tried it and it came out fine. It was not back to its original state, but it was it was less dirty, let's just say that. But the thing is, is that when you take it to the sink and you rinse, 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 it's coming out clear. So all of that is just a stain. And so when you clean your stamps, they're totally clean. There's no leftover residue. So. This is a really good one. And I don't think it's very expensive. I can't remember. It's going to be in the back of the catalog towards the tools. Look for it. It's really, it needs to be on your first order, I think. Okay, next up is a color that I did not think that I was going to be so crazy about. Gorgeous grape. You guys, all of you purple people, who on here is a purple person? There are purple people out there who have been begging Stampin' Up! to come up with some better purples, and they have. Here's one of them, gorgeous grape. And, uh, you know, I'm not a purple person, you guys. I, I'm just not one of my favorite colors, but I'm pretty, pretty obsessed with this color. I can't stop playing with it. It's just absolutely bright and beautiful, and it looks great with Daffodil Delight, doesn't it? Okay, so the stamps that I'm using, also new, painted glass, and... Again, at first glance, I thought, meh, but since I have been playing with it, oh my gosh, so fun. And the framelits, look how amazing they are. Just really different than anything that we have. Um, this, um, I have to tell you that when I first made this card, my original one, which I'm not seeing here, it was sitting here, I hand cut this, but then I realized, hello, there's a butterfly. Don't even need to hand cut it, perfect. So there's um, the butterfly, the bird, and the flower. 
that all go with the stamp set. And then we've got vellum paper that coordinates with this as well. Um, I have been making some cards for my catalog kickoff event, which is next Saturday. So any of you who are local in San Antonio, um, message me for the instructions, directions, and all that, because um, I would love for you to come. Now, next Friday for you guys, I'm gonna have a special catalog kickoff Facebook Live. Um, so make sure you join me on Friday. And I think I'm gonna stay at two o'clock, but watch my email and my blog and my Facebook, because I might make it a little bit earlier in the day, um, just because at two o'clock is when the catalog goes live. So maybe we need to to do all of our stuff before then. So I probably will be a little bit earlier that day. All right, so anyway, um, I have been making samples for my catalog kickoff, and these were actually cased. Um, cased means that you kind of copy what someone else has done. So my case isn't exactly the same as the two that I found, but pretty similar. I really liked this, and you can see how I colored it in with blends, and then I put some vellum over it to kind of mute it a little bit, and then that kind of gothic font. Um, pink, yellow, and gray, great colors. And then this one is really fun. I use the Stamparatus to stamp these butterflies around in a perfect circle. And then we have one popped up. Again, hand cut before I realized we had a butterfly butterfly framelit that matched it. <sighs> it's new, guys, it takes me a while. All right, so there's two examples of this set. It's really interesting. Um, and you know, like when I first saw it, I was like, meh, meh, it's all right. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. All right, so let's do the stamping first. Of course, you know the measurements are gonna be on that PDF. The, apparently the little link I put in the description of the video isn't working for some reason. So you guys just type in pinkbuckaroo.com and I'll fix it after I am done. I'll make sure that it's correct. All right, so gorgeous grape. We're gonna stamp this little circle and gorgeous grape and I want to just kind of have some of them on and some of them off just kind of making a pattern so I'm just gonna stamp like that and then when I pick it up there we go easy right no problem all right we're going to adhere that to a piece of daffodil delight There, and we're set that aside. Now let's stamp our butterfly. Now hold on, I'm gonna shake the camera a little bit. Sorry, it's touching my cord. Now I'm gonna color this butterfly with Stampin' Blends, and when you color with Stampin' Blends, you need to use Memento. In a little while, the next project I'm gonna use stays on. But for this, you wanna use Memento. Memento will work well with your blends. I'm also going to stamp the sentiment in gorgeous grape, but I'm gonna stamp it on vellum. And when you stamp our classic ink on vellum, you have to be really careful because it does not dry right away. Vellum is a non-porous surface, which means that ink is sitting right on top. So I'm just gonna use my heat tool and hit it for a few seconds to get that ink to dry. Otherwise, I'm gonna make a giant mess with it and smear it all over the place. Now you could let it sit for a while, and you would need to let it sit for quite a while to get it to dry. Same with a window sheet. If you're stamping um, classic ink on a window sheet or vellum, you definitely need to dry it. Now you wanna be careful not to leave the heat too long on your vellum because you will scorch it. I feel like the vellum scorches faster than the regular cardstock. And I'm just gonna heat my butterfly just a second too to make sure that ink is dry. I find that the Memento works beautifully with all the inks, no problem, except yellow, and only because it feel, I feel like it picks up the black if I don't heat set it or give it time to dry. So if you're using yellow, just hit it with a heat tool for a second and then it'll be fine. All right, so we're gonna use the Daffodil Delight Blends. And I'm gonna use the dark for the outside of the wing. And if you guys have seen the new catalog, we have new blends colors coming. We're very, very excited about that. Um, but there's a delay, of course. I know you guys are gonna be sad about that, but there's a delay in the blend. So the, blend, the new blends will not be available until mid-June. But that's okay. Go ahead and get the other things you want on your first order. 
on June 1st. And then mid-month, you can order start ordering those blends, or you can wait and join my blends club in the fall. And I don't know about the other colors, the regular colors that have been on back order for so long. Um, I'm doing light, so I did dark on the outside and then light, and then I'm leaving the rest of it white except for his little body there. I'm gonna do that in light. So I'll let you guys know about those blends as soon as I know, because I don't know anything about the, the blends that we currently have. When, if those will be June 1st or if those will be mid-June also. I kind of feel like it's gonna be mid-June also. Okay, so now we've got this little lattice right here. Can you guys see that? It is this framelit, and I was very intrigued by it. It's beautiful. Um, and I've been playing with it. It cuts beautifully, and it's very, very thin. So the problem then is how do I adhere it? Well, if you can remember before you cut it to use a multi-purpose adhesive sheet, it's going to stick perfectly. So get um, the, a multi-purpose adhesive sheet, which is in our adhesive section in our catalog. I feel like this is one of our best kept secrets. It's so good. You peel off that top, lay your piece down, and then I'm gonna lay this back on here. Whoops, let me do it this way. So that it sticks to the parts that are still sticky. And then I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna cut it out. And I've, ma I've made this piece bigger than I need it, so I don't have to really worry about the edges. All right, so now this is basically an adhesive backed piece of cardstock, which is going to make it uh, much easier for us to stick it on that card base. Okay, now if I can make some room here. This is a great time to use your magnetic platform because this butterfly needs to hold still, we don't want it to wiggle. And with these smaller framelits, sometimes you need to move your cardstock. See how it's jumping? Just move your cardstock wherever it wants to be. Let the magnet be in charge. And then I'm just gonna set this one here. Now I'm gonna run it through a couple times because this one is so intricate. I wanna make sure that I get a really good cut. So I'm gonna go through a couple times. Also, because we put the adhesive on the back, it's a lot thicker now. So let me look and see. On the back, you can flip it over and look. Yep, cut beautifully. All right, so we are ready. Let's take that off, and of course our butterfly comes right out. I know, new shiny cutting plates. I know, I'm trying not to use them very much, Carla. I have like 20 sets of cutting plates, and I wanna keep those nice and clean ones clean, so I'm only using them every now and then. All right, oh, I knew I was gonna forget where this was. It was covered up by grid paper. I'm gonna take my dye brush. Look how it's just popped right out. And I'm gonna go through here and get all these out. And some of the littlest little doodads stick to the backing, so Sometimes you have to pull them out towards the front. This one is, of course, not behaving like all the other ones I have cut. There we go. All right, now the little tiny ones, you can use your paper piercer. And these will be stuck to you for the next five days. You'll find them everywhere because they have adhesive on them. You'll find them on your dog and you'll find them in your car and you'll find them on your leg. Don't ask me how I know. All right, there we go. So I took that backing off. There's the backing, just like a sticker. I'm gonna put that right there. And it's a little bit longer than we need, whoops. So let's just trim it off. And there we go, isn't that nice, that tone on tone, that same color, and it creates that subtle texture. So pretty. All right, let's put it all together. We're gonna put, actually, let's put this on first. Now, you guys, I know Fast Fuse has retired, and it's gone, it's sold out, but I have a lot of it, and I'm gonna keep using it until I'm done, <laughs> okay? So please don't get angry with me that I'm using retired adhesive and you can't get it. I know, but I'm not gonna just let it sit in my drawer and not get used. 
So I'll be using mine for probably another few months because I've got quite a bit of it. But you can use your snail or your tear and tape or your Tombow, whatever you prefer, and stick this right down with dimensionals. I used my Fast Fuse for that vellum, by the way. You could use any of those, really. And with a dimensional, there's the butterfly. All right, and there you go. A thank you card. I love it. I love those colors. And I did not think I was going to really like this bundle, but of course, now I do. Yay. All right, so what do you guys think about Gorgeous Grape? Do you need it? Do you want it? Even if you're not a purple person, I challenge you to get some. I didn't think I'd want it, and I love it. Okay, we are done with the first two. Let me move this out of the way, and we'll do the very last project, which is a 3D project today. And find a place for all of this. All right, so this project features two new colors as well, balmy blue and um, grapefruit grove. I always wanna say something else when I go to say grapefruit grove, but look, isn't that cute? I thought this would be perfect to put in a gift card and some candy, like for your dad for Father's Day, slide in the gift card and maybe some of his favorite candy. All right, so let me tell you about the products. Um, that I am using. I'm using two different stamp sets actually. This stamp set is called Lily Pad Lake and it has wonderful coordinating framelits. Um, this makes a great masculine card, but the sentiments are kind of, um, I don't know, thinking of you, congratulations. It wasn't really what I was looking for. So, oh, and before I move on to the next stamp, I was gonna show you this one. I made this for a swap. Um, and I used all these framelits. So there's the bird and the flowers and the grass and that big label that I like and the skinny label. That's the only framelit we're gonna use out of here for this project. So it's a good one. I um, have really enjoyed playing with that one. This is where I got the sentiment. It is our new itty bitty greetings. It's taking the place of teeny tiny wishes. If you've been around for as long as I have and you have teeny tiny wishes, this is replacing it. I really like how they're all different fonts, but they're still small. So whenever you need to squeeze a sentiment somewhere in, these are perfect. Um, lots of different ones, lots of, you know, like maybe a small oval, but then this framelit right here, right here, fits nicely around these really skinny ones, as will that, our punch, that looks like this. Think this is retiring. Look, I can't even remember this punch too. This works really well. So I haven't cleaned out my retired punches, you guys. I have started the big clean out and it was hard. I cleaned out my stamps this week. I cleaned out my ink, pulled all the retired stuff. You might've seen that picture. It's a big job. Okay, so let's get started. Now to make the holder itself, you're gonna need your envelope punch board. And I've got a piece of this balmy blue, which I, again, love. Um, it's six by six, and we're going to, you're only gonna need to measure twice. And then the rest of it, you're just gonna line it up with your score lines. And so it's on here, right here at the bottom. Um, you're gonna slide this in your envelope punch board. Here's our scoring tool. And the first one we're gonna do is one and a half. So you line it up at one and a half right there and score and punch. And then you're gonna slide it down to three and an eighth and score and punch. And then after that, no measuring, just lining it up. So turn it, line up that score, that score marker and punch, slide it over to the second score line, score and punch, turn, score and punch. It kind of, whoops, whoa. Oh, way out of the lines. It kind of feels like a dance. Score and punch. Score and punch. Maybe I should do a kickball change in there too somewhere. Okay, there we go. So I did all four sides and that's what it looks like. Now we're gonna round the these, these two sides right here. These two, I'm gonna show you two different options to do with this. If you want these to show, you'll round them. But for this one, I'm not gonna round them because I am gonna just 
glue them down. All right, so just stick that right there and punch again and it rounds that corner. And don't forget to put your tool in here, you guys. I always make sure that I put it there right away, otherwise I will lose it. I will lose it. Okay, now turn your, your paper so that the bigger ends are to the side and then you're gonna cut this score line there and there and then turn it and do the same thing on the other side there and there all right so we have these flaps like that all right now before we fold it all together we we're gonna stamp the water so I need to get my grid paper back over here and we're gonna use the water stamp and the balmy blue well I might as well just get everything while I'm over here Okay, balmy blue ink and the long water stamp. And I'm going to kind of tuck these in. It doesn't really matter, I guess, because those will be tucked in anyway. And I'm gonna stamp it right here in that midsection. There we go, ah, I knocked the camera. All right, so there's that. Now we can put it together. Move those out of the way. I'm gonna put my adhesive right here on these four corner tabs. All right, now fold and fold and it goes behind that side and behind that side and then fold them up and do the same on this side. And there you have your little holder. Let me get that one in. There we go. Okay, so now these guys I told you you could leave them kind of in like that to cover up what's in there a little bit. But I just put some adhesive right here and folded it in like that. And then adhesive and fold it in. All right, so there we have it. Now let's take our, you put your little gift card and your candy in there and you wanna take the eighth of an inch handheld hole punch. And this is Grapefruit Grove. 1 8 inch grow grain ribbon and I'm going to feed it through right here like that cut this off and we're going to tie it closed and then we'll make our little tag I, I really like this the in color grow grain ribbon it's skinny and uh, it's easy it's easy to tie, it's not too bulky, it's good. All right, so there we have it. Now let's make our tag. I'm gonna bring over, no, I don't think I need that again. Let's do the water again. Okay, I've worked myself into a tiny little square. Make some space. All right, so in Whisper White, do that water. And then I'm gonna bring over the boats and I want to point out to you that the boats um, have a matching framelit. So in case you want to cut those out later on, there's a matching framelit for that. Now, last time we used Memento, and Memento is for blends, when you're using the blends. Now, I'm gonna use just a blender pen. This is the same kind of deal as an aqua painter, it's water. So when I'm gonna use water-based to color, I have to use Stazon. The stays on has alcohol in it, so it'll dry and not smear with the water. And the blends have alcohol in them and will not, I got a little little thing there, hmm. All right, well, we're going with it. The blends have alcohol in them so that the Memento ink is water-based. So you can't mix two alcohols together or two waters together. You gotta use the opposite. Oh, let me show you. You guys always have asked this since these new ink pads come out, can you squeeze them to put ink on the lid? Yes, so squeeze it. And it seems like squeezing the bottom works the best. And then there's your little puddle. All right, so this is a grapefruit grove and a blender pen. And you know, I just re-inked my stays on pad. So this looks really juicy on here. <laughs> I hope that I'm not gonna smear that ink. I hope I gave it ample time to dry. Um, the reason I went with the blender pen this time instead of the aqua painter because i usually like the aqua painter the best is because these are tiny 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 little little segments that we're coloring in and the aqua painter really 
would just make a giant mess. And this little sailboat looks like he's he's uh, jumped off the water. Maybe he's a speed sailor. All right, and then this little segment here. And when you use Whisper White with a blender pen, make sure that you just get it done quickly. Don't keep rubbing and going over and over it because your paper will pill. But because this is such a small little area, I went ahead and used Whisper White as opposed to the Shimmer White or um, the watercolor paper. All right, so we're gonna punch this out with a two inch punch, just like that. And then I'm gonna get some balmy blue and punch it with the Starburst Punch. I love the Starburst Punch. I'm so glad that it's staying around. It's a great one. And I love when something's a punch, it just makes it quick and easy. I mean, I love my framelits, but I do love having a punch too. All right, so let's do the sentiment. And what color did I do that in? I did that in Grapefruit Grove. So I chose World's Best Father right there. And it doesn't matter that it's upside down. I did that earlier too. We're gonna take that frame and cut it out. All right. I can tell we're getting towards the end because I've got a giant mess. I'm working my way into this tiny little square. All right, so use your, this is that framelit from the um, lily pad lake framelits. I can't remember exactly what they're called. Um, I wanted to remind you guys too that they're sold separately, so you could buy the stamp set and you could buy the framelits, but if you buy them as a bundle, you save 10%. So always make sure you look on the page where that has a stamp set. It'll show you the bundle price. Um, dropped it and it disappeared what in the world um so make sure you look here it is make sure you look for those bundle prices um another good reminder right now too is that all those stamps and framelits that are not retiring that are carrying over they won't have the bundle price in the new catalog if you want to save that 10 percent, you have to do it before this catalog is gone so just a little little tidbit of information now you should use a mini dimensional here, but of course I didn't get them out. So I'm just cutting off a little edge of my regular framelits. Putting that there. And the last thing is these faceted dots. Aren't they beautiful? I love them. Um, let's do the little, whoops, I've got several here. I'm gonna do this color right here, this orangey. I don't know if it's orange. I mean, if it's grapefruit or it looks a little bit lighter like that petal color, but it goes good. It goes really well with this. All right. The last thing we need to do is add this to the box. All right. And then you've got a little Father's Day treat or change the sentiment and make it a party favor or a teacher's appreciation. I don't know anything. Just changing the sentiment will change um, you know who you could give it to. All right, so there you go, guys. Three new product projects using new products. What am I trying to say? Um, I really love these colors, the Granny Apple Green, the Gorgeous Grape, and the Balmy Blue. I think if I had to pick three new colors that were my favorite, those would be them, definitely. All right, remember, hop over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. Save or print the project sheets so that you'll have the measurements and the products. None of these products, well, none of the new products can be ordered until June 1st. But if you have anything that you need to get before that annual catalog is gone, make sure you use that hostess code and I will send you these three make and takes for free next week. All right, so let me just look a little bit. Hello, everybody. I really was trying to not read your comments so that I could, I don't know, I just seemed like I was getting off task. Hi, Trisha. Um, and don't forget to share and don't forget to enter to the in the giveaway. The balmy blue, gray. yes, I know. You know, these two colors are very beachy. We stayed, we went to the beach two weeks ago for Mother's Day and they had a lot of this in there. You know, the white and the blue and then just that little coral color. It's really um, very beachy. All right. 
Well, <laughs> Marion, believe me, it takes me more than a half hour to plan all these projects. I wish I was that fast. By the time I show you guys on Facebook Friday, I've actually made them twice before. So, oh, Monica says the, the other blends are back and can be ordered now. Monica, I didn't even know that. I thought it was just the pink, the pink pirouette. Okay, there you go. So if you need the blends, Monica says they are back in stock, the current blends. So go check them out. Gloria, please email me. I can see what you're asking. Please email me, okay? Email erica at pinkbuckaroo.com. Connie says the chamois is $8. Good. And you guys like that chamois good? I know, me too. It's wonderful. All right. I think I've covered it all, you guys. If you have any last burning questions, just message me or email me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, Memorial Day here in the United States. Um, it's so hot here. I hope that it's not too hot where you're at. I hope that you get to enjoy some fun outside. All right, you guys, have a great weekend, and I will be back next Friday, probably earlier in the day, but I'll let you guys know, okay? Thanks so much. Bye.